He's the captain of our faith. We are here exclusively for him. We are here exclusively for him. We are here exclusively for him. He is our symbol, our icon. We have to show him our faith. That's what he's asking us. It's indescribable. The time of the vigil is the most important time of World Youth Day after the Mass. It represents a unique moment for everyone. Sometimes we cannot have peace between countries, yet everyone on the beach has love for each other. And you can see the union of the world and the universal faith. And you can see the union of the world and the universal faith. And you can see the union of the world and the universal faith. De todo el mundo y una fe también que es universal. Uh, it's an unbelievable experience to me. We come from Australia, the other side of the world, and it's just so good to be in Brazil. A city that has such great culture, and I just want to thank everyone who's put their feet to World Youth Day because World Youth Day, for me, it's just been the best experience of my life, and it's just incredible, absolutely incredible. He's somebody very charismatic, humble, very simple, and above all, very human. On the cross, Jesus is united with so many young people who have lost faith in political institutions because they see in them only selfishness and corruption, or who have lost faith in the church or even in God because of the incoherence of Christians and ministers of the gospel. A quarter till the hour now, an amazing scene in Rio. Three million people pouring out for the Pope at Copacabana Beach, where he is delivering Sunday Mass. Is this a sign of a possible revival for a younger Catholics? That's a live shot? That's live. Look, Look at that. that. Joining us now is Fox News religion contributor Father Jonathan yeah. Morris. Father, nice to see you. This is the first from Pot. To Pope, right? Okay, and it's very, it's very uncomfortable that Mike just tried to give me a pot cupcake. That is not no, a pot no. Anyway, father. very uncomfortable. It's a maple pot cupcake. Okay, uh, that live shot there, incredible. Pictures it at the is. end of it is remarkable. The amount of people that are there on the beach this morning. What is the Pope trying to accomplish in Rio? Well, I just got a tweet right now um, that shows that the official count from City Hall uh, in Rio de Janeiro is 3.2 million young people. Um, 3.2 million. Uh, w for what other reason, beside a spiritual reason, could you gather 3.2 million young people? I, don't, I can't think of anyone um, who could a attract that. No. And it's not just Pope Francis. Yes, he's really, I would say, revolutionized, I would say, certain aspects um, of, of the Vatican and, and the Catholic Church, not in terms of doctrine, but in terms of some practice. But they're not going to him just because of personality. Re remember that just a few months ago, Pope Francis was Jorge Bergoglio, who was taking public buses on the streets of Argentina, Buenos Aires, getting ready for retirement. And now all of a sudden, he has 3.2 million young people but who are coming to him. that why they gravitate toward him? He seems so approachable. I would say yes and no. Um, I think they are seekers. I've experienced in my own uh, ministry here in New York City, uh, young people flocking, people, young people whose parents don't go to church, young people flocking to find meaning, purpose, and passion in life. Spiritual void. Yes, absolutely. But yes, I would say no, that's the no part. They're not just coming for him, but for God. But secondly, I would say yes, because he's done some pretty radical things. He's driving around in a fiat. Okay, which in, in uh, you know in, in in Europe and it's some parts of Latin America is not exactly known as a as a classy, a luxurious car. He's doing that as he's living the same way that he lived when he was a bishop. Right, and that's Very one powerful. thing that, that everybody said that he would he would do. You know, wearing the simple cross rather rather than the uh, extravagant garb and living, uh, you know, almost like a pauper rather than in a fancy schmancy place. Yeah. Um, how much do you think that has to do with people being able to 
maybe relate to him and, and I think I think it does mean a lot. And of course that's not living poorly or simply it's not it's not the the, the climax of Christian life. There are other aspects and what he said is Christian life is all about friendship with God. Friendship with God, entering into a friendship with God. What he's also said was to these young people, go back and mix things up in your back at home. In other words, and to the priests and to the bishops, and I would say not just the Catholics, shake to all up. of us, mm -hmm. shake things yes. up, go out there, because people are not going to be coming and waiting for you in the pews. Yeah, don't sit in your house anymore.